Hey guys, my name is Matt Johnson and I am in Iceland. Of course, you can probably tell that because there's mountains and stuff like that. Or maybe you just think I'm in Colorado maybe or something. But no, Iceland, the land of fire and ice. And I had the idea whenever I was going on this trip to film a lot of videos. I was like, man, we're gonna do like a fun travel video and we're gonna do a behind the scenes of that video. So we arrived the first day and we were total zombies, way too tired to film any behind the scenes. I just filmed a little bit of footage around the country. Second day, same thing, we were still recovering. So I have no behind the scenes until day three. And I didn't really know what I was doing with the behind the scenes. It was like a, oh look, here's a pretty shot, let's fly the drone. Or, oh look, this is pretty, I'm gonna shoot a time lapse here. But there was no real reasoning behind why I was taking those shots. And Rachel reminded me of that. She's like, hey, are you going to tell people why you're taking these shots? And I was like, well, that's a good idea. Okay, so I realized that a lot of you watch my videos because you want to learn. You don't wanna just see pretty stuff, you wanna know why and how I shot things a certain way. So that's my goal with this video, to show you why and how I shot a certain way, my reasoning behind my shots, my thought whenever I pulled up to a place and said, oh, I definitely think I should fly the drone here. Or, oh, this would be perfect for a time lapse. So with that, like I said, I already have multiple clips that I shot the first two days that we were here. So I'm gonna go retroactively back now. I'm gonna show them to you and talk through them my reasoning, what I was thinking, why that happened. It is my hope that this video is helpful to you and doesn't just show you a pretty shot, but also gives you insight into why and how I shot this way so that you can apply it whenever you are shooting in various locations, maybe in Iceland, who knows? That'd be a lot of fun. So let's get right into it. Hey guys, quick interruption here from Matt from the future, and I wanted to let you know that since getting back from Iceland, I filmed an epic drone and time-lapse travel film using the footage that I cover in this BTS. So if you haven't seen that yet, I would love it if you could check it out, and I will link to it up here in the corner and down in the description. Thanks, now back to the BTS. Day one, first day, we drove around, it was raining pretty hard, and it was not good drone or time-lapse weather. Whenever we got to our Airbnb cabin, which is out in the middle of nowhere, and I love it, it's near Selfoss, the weather had cleared up, things were looking beautiful, so I knew it was time to take a time-lapse. And my thinking for that was that there was this really cute little red house, and it was on this hill, so you couldn't see anything behind it except for clouds. I will put in text over this part of the video the exact settings that I was using for the time-lapse once I checked them from the raw file because at this point I do not remember off the top of my head my exact settings that I was using. This is nuts. It looks like Antarctica. Yeah. If you're wondering why I'm not recording audio right now, it's because it looks like a winter wonderland right now. We were out here two days ago and this was all green grass and now it is snowy. So welcome to Iceland. There's no prediction, no control of anything. It's just crazy weather year-round. Like, this is totally different. It looks pretty. Totally different. This is totally different than what it was two days ago. This is amazing. For this waterfall over here on the left that we're passing by right now, we filmed on the second day. And I parked right here and took the drone off and flew across this field right up to the waterfall, which looked beautiful. But yesterday, it was not snowy. Now it is totally snowy. It's so crazy how the weather changes so quickly here in Iceland. That's amazing. For that drone shot, I had my ND16 filter on because the sun was out and it was pretty darn bright. And I was filming at 4K30 again because all my drone stuff is at 4K30. And I was at ISO 100. My initial thoughts for that shot, I wanted to do a slow push up to the waterfall from by the road. And then I wanted to do some parallax movements rotating around the waterfall. For that drone flight, I was dealing with some pretty heavy wind. Not the highest intensity wind that I've dealt with, but it was still very heavy and it took the drone a while to get back. So I had to be very aware of its location, especially in relation to the cliff side, because I did not want the drone to go smashing into the cliffs and be lost forever. Okay, we have the mountains here and they're blocking the wind for the most part, it seems. So I'm heavily considering flying the drone right up here against the cliff side. We're gonna pull out here and I'm gonna check it out. So many little Toyota Yaris's around here. These tiny little cars that people rent to drive. And I'm like, this is not a good car for you to drive in Iceland. You need a four wheel drive vehicle, honestly. Yeah, the wind isn't here, here isn't bad at all. This mountain is protecting all of this. Okay, let's see about flying the drone right here. This could be really, really cool. I love the car's little turn off sound. You hear that? It's so happy, pleasant. Welcome to your car. Oh, thank you. 
This is what I'm thinking right now. I'm thinking that I take off here, go up near the cliff side and fly alongside this way. So you get the cars on the road, you get some of the clouds in the distance, you get the snow. That'll look really, really pretty. For this drone shot, because it's really bright out here, sun is right out in the sky, no clouds. I'm gonna use the ND16 polarizing filter. And as you can see, well, you probably can't see, but it has a massive fingerprint on it because when I took it off last night, I definitely smudged it. So we're going to use the patented custom Matt Johnson cleaning technique of taking your shirt and wiping off the ND filter. I'm sure there's some of you yelling at me like, Matt, use a proper cleaning thing, but I don't got that. This is Iceland, stuff is expensive. You know how much cleaning cloth costs? Like 200 bucks. Okay, maybe not that much. Gotta rotate it around here to find the darkest part of the ND. That looks good there. Once I kind of line up where the darkest part is and I line it up on the camera, ND filter's fully on and we are ready to fly. You still rolling on me? Weirdo. I don't want to launch too close to this fence, too close to the car, too close to the road because in the event that the wind picks up and this drone gets tossed, I don't want it to go smashing into something. I'm shooting in D-Log custom with zero comma negative one comma negative one. I'm at ISO 100, shutter 60. All right, we are ready to go. Another thing I like to do is wait till some of the cars pass by because I don't want to necessarily be like distracting a driver, like, oh, a drone, and then like smash off the road. I try to just be very considerate whenever I'm taking off. So once these two tour buses pass, we're going. And we're rolling. And I'm bringing it up way high in case there's any cars coming. We're lining up to the shot that I was envisioning right now. I wanted to do a push out reveal of these cliff sides and just cruise the drone right alongside the edge of these cliffs. And I think it's gonna look really, really pretty. So I'm gonna basically floor the drone here. Only in, only in Iceland do you have to stop talking so that the tractor that's making sounds driving by you does not interrupt your video. This is what I wanted here, just a slow fly alongside these cliff edge. And this is looking really, really pretty. My main fear with this flight is of course being attacked by a bird because there are thousands of birds up on these cliffs and it is a legitimate fear. Thankfully that has not occurred yet, but it could happen at any moment. Also I'm seeing there's a little bit of gimbal shake that could just be from the extreme wind. I don't really have a way to combat that right now though. I'm shooting in cinematic mode right now, which means that whenever I stop and start the drone, it is going to gently come to a stop and gradually speed up. So it smooths out any of my roughness with the sticks, which there definitely can be some roughness, especially here in Iceland, because things get just so cold. And so it's hard for you. Oh crap, a bird just flew right in front of this thing. Like it started right past. Oh man. Okay, we're still alive. We're still in the air. Got 78% battery left. I got this thing just floored going forward. And it all comes back. If you've watched my Mavic review video, I really do think this is the ultimate travel drone. It is so portable. The fact that I can get this good of shots and have it in such a small package is amazing. It really does excite me for the future of drones, especially for what DJI may do with the Mavic Pro 2, because I think that this is already a really good drone. And I'm like, man, I don't know what else they would do. This is great, improve the camera for sure. But like, otherwise I'm very happy with the quality and capabilities of this drone. This one's looking incredible. I just happen to be tracking these cars at the same speed that they're going. And it looks really, really good. I don't know if you can see it. I can't see it. That's actually one con and benefit of the Mavic. If other people are looking for it, they really can't see it because it's just so tiny. But if you're looking for it because you want to be able to see it and make sure that you're landing it in the right place, other than looking at the screen, you can't see it either. So it's a little difficult. It's right there. I see it. Come to me, Mavic. Come back to me. Ah! This wind is doing crazy things to my facial hair right now. Coming into land, I like to disable any of the specialty modes, like cinematic mode that I was in. I also make it a point of angling the gimbal back up. So that way if it doesn't like hit a rock or something like that and damage the lens. Otherwise here, Slow and steady, find a spot. I don't like using return to home because especially on like a rocky ground like this, I wanna make sure that lands on a spot that is not uneven. So that looks good right there. And done. As you can see, Iceland's weather changes quickly. 
it is now snowing. Thankfully, we've been here for four nights so far, and it has not rained on my camera at night once, which is amazing because I have left it out every night to film time lapses. I had already cleared with our Airbnb owner. I said, hey, I film time lapses. Would you be cool with me setting up my camera on your property? And the owners of the house were very nice, and they said, of course, go wherever you want. That's great. You can have full access to all of our property. And I said, yes. That night around 10 p.m., I tramped out there into the field and set up my time lapse filming the pine trees and the sky in the hopes that I'd be able to see some really pretty stars and maybe the northern lights. I set up my time lapse using my time lapse remote because the internal Sony time lapse app only allows you to record up to 1,000 images and I was hoping that it would go beyond that. So I used my remote. I will double check the exact settings that I used from the raw files and put them up on the screen. But I believe that I was shooting at ISO 10,000 with a two second exposure time, white balance 3200K, I left the camera out overnight, let it record the time lapse, woke up around 7 or 8 a.m. I believe, and went out and checked it. And lo and behold, the batteries had died, but it had recorded approximately 900 photos. And whenever I reviewed them, I saw that there was the Northern Lights in them, which made me so stinking excited because it meant that I was 2-0. and Our flight over, I saw the Northern Lights, and this first night I saw the Northern Lights, which is incredible. So I'm doing really good as far as Northern Lights go. I was very happy about that. We're now east of Vic. We drove up this little road that our map said was really cool and we, you wouldn't think this close to Vic, you would see stuff like this. Like we were just by the ocean, it was warmer and now we're up here and it's cold and windy, but it's this amazing snow field and I really wanna film it. I was thinking about doing a time-lapse or a drone. The problem is that for a time-lapse, there's not many clouds in the sky. Like this is all blue sky. We have a bit of clouds over here, but not enough. Like, so I think the drone would work better low across the ground it is pretty windy, but I think the Mavic can handle it. If not, I'm sure we'll document my crash. That'll be a lot of fun. What I'm planning is doing a shot out towards these mountains because that's going to look really, really good with the shadows and the definition low across the ground. That's going to look really, really pretty. So my other thought here is that the wind is blowing this way. So if it takes off and it loses a little bit, it's going to go that direction where there's nothing it'll hit. If I put it over there in front of the car, it could hit the car. So this seems like a safer location to start the launch from. At this point, I really do wish that I had an ND32 filter because looking at it, with this snow being this bright from the sun, it's overexposed. So I am gonna need to crank up the shutter speed, not much, to like 80 instead of 60. And I think that ought to be really good. Maybe 100 actually, we'll crank it up to 100. That looks really good there. Ready for launch, co-pilot? You see it fighting that wind? Where's it gonna go? Okay, at this point here, it says we're 2,300 feet out, very gently and slowly here. There goes another off-road vehicle, wow. Yeah. They're just like us, one to do hood rat stuff with their friends on the mountaintop. Let's kick it into sport mode here, and it goes, vroom, there we go, and let's bring it back. When in doubt, sport mode will save your bacon. The problem with sport mode is that it does make it fly really kind of jerkily, so... If you're going for like pretty cinematic shots while in sport mode, really probably not gonna happen. Okay, but it is making it back here. So I'm gonna get out here and go watch it come in. Make sure I land it right. Oh, yeah, this wind is real strong. What's funny about sport mode is that it goes from flight time like, oh, you've got like 20 minutes of flight time down to like, you have six. Land this thing. I only advocate sport mode whenever you're flying on a glacier in Iceland and the winds are very strong, you need to bring your drone back. But this is something that I wouldn't have done a few days ago. Like I wouldn't have flown the drone in this wind. But now that I've had a good chance to experience the intensity of it, I feel like it's capable of handling it. Hey, test your drone. Do experimentation, see if it's okay. We'll land it over here on the road. There we go. Safe and sound. 
That was one of my favorite drone shots so far. And I knew that there was some little streams and maybe a river over there, but I didn't know exactly what it would look like till I was in the air. So I'm doing this push and I had a nice push toward the mountains, that looked good. Then I panned down and I realized there was all these little fingers of streams that were going together. And I realized, man, if I do a gimbal pan tilt up toward this mountains, it's gonna look so incredible. Very, very happy with this flight. I think that turned out very well. And we're gonna keep on going to the next adventure. I love crazy driving, off-road driving, things like that. Rachel hates it. So this is a real good test of our marriage and relationship for us to get out here into the mountains on a snow-covered dirt road and really bond as a husband and wife. Ain't that right? All over. It's so pretty. We might die though. If you find this video, uh, upload it to YouTube. Thank you. Day two began bright and early and we left driving toward Vic and we quickly learned that everything is pretty. Our entire first day, we we're just like, this is good, this is good. I wanna fly that, I wanna do this, I wanna fly over that, I wanna fill the time lapse of that, that looks good. Crazy, we didn't know what to do. So we ended up using our handy dandy photographer's guide to Iceland map here, which has been invaluable. I'll include a link to that thing when I, in the end of this video here. By using that, we learned about a couple roads that we could turn off in that they say are very pretty. So we started driving up inland confession time. Here in Iceland, we haven't really been following the rules of going to the bathroom indoors. You have not been free until you have peed on a glacier. We kept on driving up the road only about five minutes whenever I saw another part of the field that was really flat leading up to the volcano and I said, you know, a really good shot here would be a pushing shot toward it low over the grass so it's moving fast you're getting a nice motion blur of the grass and we're cruising toward the volcano that would look amazing took off started flying got a good shot i was using the Polar pro nd filters and i had it set to the highest filter setting the nd16 because at the time the sun had been out whenever i was getting ready to fly but unfortunately the sun started going behind a cloud and starting getting darker so i actually had to crank up the iso i put up to i believe 400 to make it bright enough so that the image looked good. We only went another, what, 10 minutes, right? Something like that, about. And then we ended up finding our first waterfall, which, this is a big deal. Upon looking at the map, we realized that it actually wasn't on the map at all that we have. It wasn't even a major waterfall. But we were still very, very excited. We're like, it's a waterfall, it's happening. So we kind of frantically drove up to it and proceeded to freak out. And I'm like, I gotta fly the drone, this looks crazy. And I had this whole idea of flying the drone up the waterfall. So flying up the river and then raising gently up over the waterfall. And so I got it out, launched it, started flying it up. And I realized, first of all, that it had started to snow more. And not a little bit, it had snowed a ton. And it was coming down, not blizzard level, but way more than we're used to in Texas. Like enough snow that it was making me a little nervous for the Mavic because I was like, can this thing handle snow? I don't know. But I was also a little concerned about the codec of the Mavic because the H.264 codec in it is not really built for small moving objects like snow. And so that can cause it to really break down. So I don't exactly know how good that footage is gonna turn out, but I'm hoping that it's really pretty. So I'm raising it up through the snow, up this waterfall. I did the same shot again, this time a little bit closer and did a little bit more detail shots that I wanted to get. So a shot, flying with the water and then angling down over the waterfall as I passed over it. I always think that looks like a cool shot. Crazy one lane bridge out here. This is nuts. Okay, these cars are gonna wait for us, thank God. Okay, good. This is gnarly. We're surviving though. All right, great. Friendly wave, hello fellow tourists. Okay, bye. At this point in our journey, we were almost into Vic. And one thing I like to do whenever I'm driving in any new place where I'm thinking about places to stop and film, I'm always looking for cool stuff. And sometimes I don't realize it's cool until I'm almost all the way past it. So in this case, we were driving and we saw this beautiful valley with this river running down through it, moving down right toward the town of Vic. And I said, oh man, this is pretty. And then in the back of my mind, I'm like, oh right, I should probably 
fly the drone at this point. So we made a mental note of this one location that had a turn off and we said, let's go back to that in a little bit. We went to Vic, hung out. Later on, on our drive back out from Vic, we stopped back at this small turnout point that we'd seen when we were heading into Vic, right next to this beautiful valley with the mountains and the town of Vic in the background. And I said, okay, now we can fly the drone here. So I took it off and we flew it down the canyon toward Vic and then up the canyon up into the mountains. And I did this several times because I wanted a variety. I wanted a shot of the canyon with the mountains slowly raising up and then I wanted a shot of me flying down through, down in the valley. And then I did a raise up to show the town of Vic. And what was really, really cool about this shot that I loved is that as I did a raise, all you could see was the quaint little church of Vic in the distance. You couldn't see anything else in the city. It was just that church because it was a little bit higher and had a steeple and everything else, which looked super cool. As far as drone settings go, I believe I was using the ND16 filter because it was very bright outside. I had that set up shooting in 4K30, much like I always do with the drone, ISO 100, and I think that looked really, really great. We've been traveling east along the ring road today. We're a long ways past Vic at this point, and we came up to the Snaefels, Vervin Snaefels, Jokel Glacier. I don't know exactly how you pronounce any Icelandic word, but we're now at this really cool glacier. And I was like, oh my gosh, we have to fly the drone here, especially because there's no wind. So I've got the ND8 polarizing filter here that I'm gonna put on this guy. And we're gonna fly the Mavic out over the glacier, over the frigid cold waters that will certainly lose it if it is crashed. So hopefully that will not happen. But I'm very excited about this because this glacier is massive. My thoughts are the glacier comes down the mountain here toward the sea. So I'm thinking that if I can fly the drone up upwards, up it, that's gonna look really incredible. And then I also wanna do maybe some lower stuff just showing this is the details of the glacier because that looks really cool. So I've got it set up here ready to fly. I have the ND8 filter on. It is slightly darker than I want it to be. So I've cranked it up to 200 ISO. Otherwise everything is the same. Shutter is at 60, I'm at 7400K white balance and we're about ready to go. Wait for these people to leave though. I hate whenever people come up to me when I'm flying. Sometimes it's nice, but usually it's like, hey, I'm trying to get a shot here. What are you doing? They're like, hey, what's up? No. There we go. All right. Prepped and ready for launch, Captain. I never thought that I could love ice this much. Cruising now over the glacier, seeing what we can see. Yeah, usually I've, whenever I'm flying the drone, I'm like, man, I could probably recover it, you know, if I crash it. In this situation, there is no recovery. Like if it's crashed, it's, it's gone. Nothing out there, and there's no way to get out there to the glacier to recover it. Until it melts in 10,000 years and some futuristic civilization finds my drone and wonders what it is. All right. Let's bring her home. Like, I know that yesterday I was like, this is the prettiest shot I've ever shot. And now today I'm like, this is the prettiest shot I've ever shot. Every day has had another new height of, this is the prettiest shot ever. Whenever you're flying a drone, I find it's best to think like a turtle. Very slow, don't go fast, take your time, you'll get some beautiful stuff. In this case, panning it up here, there is the parking lot, but there is the sunset too, so... Win? I think that's a win. All right, bring her on back here. Full speed. My fingers are cold and I do not want to crash the drone now. And after we got all these pretty shots. So we're going to haul booty on back over here. I'm sure there's people over there right now like, is that a drone? What kind of drone is that? Hey, that guy's flying a drone. Let's go talk to him about it. There he is. He, she, I don't know. I have not given my drone a gender yet. I should really name my drone. I don't know what I name it, but hey. I named the other one Droney. Should I just name this one Droney as well? Droney. Droney the drone. I needed to go, where's less rocks? 
This looks safe and unrocky. We just gotta avoid that big rock right there. It's good. Yes! Another successful flight by Matt Johnson. We have made it finally to the Glacier Lagoon. I did not think that we would make it. We were a little tired. We're like, do we really want to drive this far? Totally worth it. This is incredible. It is very crowded with people though. Like there is a lot of people roaming around, taking pictures, stuff like that. So I don't know if I want to fly the drone. We also dealt with a ton of wind whenever we were driving up here. Now that we're here, there's not a lot of wind. So I may fly the drone. I'm still thinking about it. What I know that I definitely want to do is film a time lapse because we're getting some really nice cloud gradation. There's some really, really beautiful icebergs that we might get a little bit of movement of if I let it sit here for a little bit. I wasn't planning on flying the drone, but I saw this really, really cool low shot that I want to do through the Glacier Lagoon. I'm hoping that's okay. Hoping I don't crash it. But I feel like a lot of this is about taking risks to get good shots. And I know that the Glacier Lagoon is a little cliche, but it's not as cliche as like the Golden Circle or something like that. I feel like this is still remote enough and people have to drive all the way over here. So there's not as many people shooting this. And that's what makes me excited about it. All right, we're now leaving the Glacier Lagoon and beginning our long trek back to our cabin. I think it's like three hours. Not too bad, it's 8 p.m. So we'll be there probably around 11, I guess. That's not horrible. It has been an amazing day. Oh, we got across this bridge here. Hope we don't die. I think we're good. Okay, yeah, we're good. <laughs> we're not dead. Okay, good. I wasn't sure about flying the drone. And part of it was a desire to film things that aren't super cliche in this video. Part of it was a fear of already having got all these cool shots, like that glacier shot and all these things. I didn't want to necessarily crash the drone and be like, no. But whenever I went up on this hill overlooking the glacier lagoon and I saw this one shot where I could be weaving through the glaciers, real low and i was so impressed by that and so compelled to shoot that that i was like rachel i have to do it one of the things that i do want to talk about in this behind the scenes video that i feel is very important is making sure that whenever you travel to iceland that you are properly fed and hydrated drink a lot of appleson which is a delicious carbonated beverage that they have here in Iceland from Iceland. It's called Appleson, but it tastes like oranges. So I think that's just like an inside joke on their part. We survived on sandwiches, Doritos, which do not taste the same as American Doritos, by the way. And what cheese? else do we eat? Lots, Lots of cheese. Of cheese. We so much cheese. Lot. We're very talented cheese eaters, I gotta say. Oh yeah, we survived on chips and cheese. Chips, cheese, and cinnamon rolls. The Johnson meals diet. of Icelandic adventurers everywhere. Our last stop, after we flew the drone through the canyon, we kept on going to the Black Sand Beach at Vic, which is very famous and home of the basalt columns that look really, really pretty. For us though, we didn't really want to film them, especially because there was approximately 400 tourists all crawling over them. So it wouldn't have looked good in a time-lapse or a drone shot or on video really at all for that matter. I did get a few little close-up detail shots of it and I did film Rachel walking up and down the beach, looking off into the distance, which I think could end up looking really cool. But otherwise, we were not that impressed from a photographic or video standpoint by the basalt columns. It was fun to take selfies in front of, but not so much fun because of the amount of people around. We continued on and ended up at this massive cliff overlooking the ocean where there's this massive natural stone arch, and it looks really, really cool. As we pulled up, I saw this guy flying a Inspire 2 drone with a huge case and all. He's like walking around. I'm like, man, I bet that footage looks so good. But it's also a massive drone. For me though, I was very happy to go over to nearly the same spot that he was at and launch my drone from there because it was wide open. Thankfully, it's like he'd already scouted it out for me, which is really great. And I was able to film some really, really pretty shots of the lighthouse and of the beach with the sun setting. After flying all over that, we were pretty done for the day and we headed back to the cabin. Settings for the Mavic Pro, I believe I was using the ND8 filter, which honestly was a little dark and I probably should have switched down to the four or not use it at all depending on the brightness. So I ended up having to crank the ISO up to 400 to compensate. The footage is probably gonna be slightly more grainy, but I should be able to adjust it with a bit of noise reduction. 
Otherwise, I was shooting in 4K at 30 frames per second. White balance was manual, of course, set to 7400 Kelvin. When we got back to the cabin, I was sad to see that there were no northern lights, but there was a few stars visible through the clouds. So after roaming around outside on our Airbnb host property, I found a really cool volcanic rock that was jutting up and I set up the camera facing that to give it some nice foreground with the stars going by in the background being my intention. I kept my settings the same as I did from the first night. So a two second exposure, ISO 10,000. Unlike the first night, which I believe I had set to 20 seconds, I believe I set this one to an interval of 15 seconds to give me a few more photos, hopefully before the batteries died. In my case, I ended up that second night with 1800 photos. So they lasted nearly the entire night. And whenever I checked on the footage, it was actually overexposing at the end. So they had lasted up until the overexposure was occurring, which was really great. What was funny about it was that the camera itself was fine, but the time-lapse remote trigger that I use to run my time lapses overnight had frost covering it. So the camera was not frozen, but the remote trigger was, even though it was still working. So I'm very thankful that it was still operational, but hey, that's what you get whenever you purchase $20 remote time-lapse triggers from Amazon. Saving the day. That's a wrap for part one of this BTS, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Because I'm condensing down a five-day Iceland trip and I was looking at this behind the scenes video and I'm like, man, I'm already hitting 30 minutes. I decided to split it up into two parts so you can expect part two very soon. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave one below or get in touch with me through my website, whoismat.com. It is also a massive, like, glacier-sized help to me if you would consider liking this video and subscribing if you'd like to see more behind the scenes videos like this in the future. You may have also noticed some iPhone photo and video clips sprinkled throughout this BTS and those I actually posted while I was in Iceland to my Instagram and my Facebook pages. So if you would like to follow me to get kind of a running stream of consciousness of my behind the scenes, that would be really cool. My Instagram is instagram.com slash who is Matt and I will link to my Facebook page down in the description of this video. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day. It's important eat healthy when in Iceland. I recommend cheese.